Hi, and welcome to another episode of Pearls with Janice. Today we are talking about getting the job. This is part three of a five-part series. Today we're talking about preparing for the interview. Part one was creating a resume, part two creating a cover letter, and now let's say you got the phone call that there is an interview scheduled for you. Well, You never want to go to your interview cold. You need to do preparation. Very brief. Let's take a look at a document I created on preparing for the interview. Okay. In preparing for the interview, what I ask that you do right away is have in front of you, as you prepare, a copy of that job posting or the advertisement for the job that you first saw, which uh, made you apply for the job. In that, you're going to be looking for the duties, the responsibilities, which you need to prepare. Okay? Number two, look at a job description on the internet for a job title such as the one you applied for. Now, Within the job description, you may be able to go to that company specifically. They may have their job descriptions listed under their policies and procedures on a website, but some may not. So if you Google the title of the job, you will find a generic list of job duties and responsibilities for a job title such as the one you're looking to attain. Now, You're going to look for job qualifications in that job description, the skills that are needed, the abilities that are needed, and the education that's expected to, so that you could be selected for the position. Now, so we have the job posting, we have a job description in front of us, and now you're going to also have a copy of your resume. You are now going to look at the duties and responsibilities, the qualifications, the skills, the education that are listed in these two documents, and you're going to pull out your resume, and you are going to try and match where you have a similar skill, a similar qualification, a similar educational background as that job posting or job description. So you're trying to be prepared to say why it is that you're the best person for the job. Now, let me pull this down a little bit Um, or up. Uh, Number four, you're going to also do research on the company that you're applying to, the school you're applying to, the bank you're applying to, whatever agency or group it is that you're applying to, you need to learn about them. Now, some of them, again, will have a terrific website. They'll talk about their goals. They might even have a strategic plan that talks about their three-year goals or five-year goals. They may have their policies and procedures up. They may have a lot of information about their history of their company and um, the number of employees, etc. However, some companies, schools, or banks may not have all of that on their websites. So it's up to you now to Google. You're going to Google the name of the company and you're going to find out some of these things. The history, the goals, the numbers of employees. Um, In addition, if you know someone who works there, you may ask that person the same questions about their company. But do not only go by what someone someone else says. Perception as to what a company's goals are or how a company is to work for ends up being a very personal thing. And what may not be a perfect fit for one person may be your perfect job, okay? Now, so what you've done now, you've looked at your job posting advertisement, you had a job description you Googled for, you pulled your resume and you sat and did some matching. Now, you're also going to, 
uh, learn a little bit about the company, as we said in number four, because they're going to ask you one of the anticipated questions, and that's item number five, will probably be, do you know anything about our company? You want to be able to say, yes, I did some research and I found that you've been in operation for 52 years or whatever it might be. Now, if it's a school, you're going to definitely want to go on the Department of Ed website, find out about their test scores, find out a lot of information on those school report cards. You may even go to their website and find a lot about their school. Now, number five, in preparation for that interview, you are going to find on the internet Just Google anticipated questions for an interview for such and such a position. But I'm going to list for you a a few questions that will definitely be asked of you. Describe for me any education you achieved, positions you've held, or skills you possess that make you the perfect person for this position. Well, the answer to that you have because you prepared with num- having done number one, number two, and number three. Okay? Number, uh, the next question I would anticipate, do you know anything about our company? Again, yes, I did some research. I spent some time on your website or I went to the Department of Ed website or I Googled the name of the company. Okay, and then you tell them what you learned and what impressed you and why you think it's the perfect fit for you. What are your strengths as an employee? You're going to talk about some of these skills and duties and responsibilities that they're looking for and why you have a strength in that. And then what are your areas of weakness? Now, that is a tricky question because what you're going to do is we're going to take something that could be construed as positive, but that we may identify as a weak area. So I want you to think about that while you're preparing. Our uh, fourth part in this series on getting the job will be engaging actively within that interview and I will show you how to answer that question in that segment on Pearls with Janice. Now what I want you to do is go back do each one of these five things get ready for the interview and when you do number one two and three If you find that you're having trouble connecting your experiences, your qualifications, your education with exactly what number two and number one show, I want you to go back to my part one of this segment on creating a resume. It is 21 minutes, but get in there because in the middle, I talk about transitioning skills, taking skills from one job, even if you're a housewife, and taking that and transitioning it into the proper language for matching a duty or responsibility that a a new employer would be looking for. So you have a lot of work to do. You're going to prepare for the interview. And we will then have part four and part five up very soon. Part four, being actively engaged in the interview. And part five is what to do after the interview. Thank you. Subscribe to www.pearlswithjanice.com for free on YouTube. Bye.